So let's move on in the preparation of our proposal. So here we go to the project structure and after having this information already in the system we go and open the tree for the proposal level and in the, pla in the plan observing I will right click and select new science goal. What a science goal is? Well, remember that a science goal is a set of instructions that you provide the astronomers at the site at the, that, and then they are going to use these instructions uh, when they are going to execute your, pro, uh, your program at the telescope. These are instructions regarding the spectral setup, correlator mode that you want to use. Also, you need to specify the calibration strategy you want to follow. You need to specify the sensitivity limit that you want to reach and the, the angular resolution that you want to, to observe, the use for observations and that will define the, the, the array configuration that is going to be used for your project and all of this is defined using or generating the science goal in the OT and then from here we get a lot of work to do <laughs> So let's continue with the, the preparation of our proposal. We already have a lot of info in there, but still plenty to go. So here in the planet obs in the plan observing uh, level, you can see that once you have created one science goal, so you still you, you start seeing this table to be created. And if you go to the science goal level, then you get this huge form that you can also reach kind of splitting by different sections in this list okay so in the general ah notice also that you have these tabs here that we also will in, let you navigate between these different uh, fields here okay so in general the science goal the science goal name Remember that if you have more than one science goal, they should have different names and, and unique names. Otherwise, it will mess up the system. <laughs> so be creative. I'm not going to be. This is going to be the first one. I don't know, perhaps the last one also. <laughs> In the description, this is also optional, uh, more, mostly for your records, your own records, because perhaps if you get accepted the proposal and you don't remember <laughs> what was the real scope of the of the science goal, so you go here and you remember, right? But I'm not going to include any info there. By the time being, I just I'm going to be starting with the field setup. So let's start in this one so in the field setup in the editors panel we have all of this info to include we also can include information from files if we have a list of uh, sources or a list of coordinates in a single field they want to do pointings single pointings to in in those in so i can i can upload that list from this uh, button and it has to comply some format this format is in here it has to be one ASCII file and it has to include all of this info uh, basically yeah galactic coordinates uh, ascension declination the proper motions velocities and kinematics and though the estimatives or the yeah the fluxes and the, the polarization fractions that you are expecting to detect from from these uh, objects okay that is the information that you want to that, that you need to include there remember that you always can include the on i will do okay and close here remember that you can always go to this to this uh, bottom here to this question mark 
icon and it will tell you everything about format and how the fields how is the is the format of the table that you, you should you should include all right so let's look for one source I, I let's look for my fav one of my favorite source it has a beautiful name as you can see and if I hit in if I click resolve it should work if you are connected to internet yeah so I will uh, retrieve the information from Simbat position, proper motion, velocity, so the information needed is going to be there, right? So select and it will uh, fill up the information I need. Expected sources, expected sources properties, this information I also need to, to fill it up, okay? If you don't know this, go and read the manual. And in the manual, uh, there are good uh, references on how to figure it out. For example, in the peak continuum flux density, I also put this info in, in the presentation. In the peak con continuum flux density per synthesized beam, the value that goes there is, for example, if you have a extended source, is the weakest component that you can think, or is the weakest, yeah, the weakest blob in your source. That is the flux that you should include there. Okay, in that in that box. So I want to I want to I want to try to detect continuum towards this this source. Many people are going to say, "Oh, there is not dust there." Let's see. All right. So I think that this should be one some 15 milligrams key. A three sigma. Let's see. I hope so. Okay. I don't think it is polarized. Okay. But if you have doubts with the polarization part. Uh, the minimum polarization that you can detect with ALMA is one, uh, 0.1% in continuum linear, in, in linear polarization from continuum, okay? In circular, circular polarization from continuum, you can detect uh, down to 1.8%, no, not less than that, is the and the same limit applies for the, li uh, the line linear polarization, okay? So in any, if any, any doubt, go here and click the mark question. I will be repeating that in the presentation. All right, so I won't assume any polarization for this source. I will look for some line emission, yes, and I think these are 60 milijansky. Uh, of peak line flux density. How to do? How to know that name also? But again, this the weakest component that is to be detected should be entered for each source in that field. Okay, and if you are going actually for absorption lines, include the the depth of the line as a positive quantity. 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 Okay. All right. So I'm going for emission anyway. And in the line width, you should include the full width half maximum of the narrowest emission line that you are expecting to find. Okay. I will will be, will go for two kilometers per second. That is the no five kilometers per second. These are jets that I'm looking for. So this is going to be a line that perhaps is not related to the jet, whatever. Okay, but okay, all of this and we haven't displayed the source here. But for that, we need to define the frequencies where we are going to observe, because otherwise the system don't know the primary beam and all of, uh, all of those setups. So for that, I quickly define, I will go here and quickly define the band that we want to observe. So here there are several options. We want to do one spectral line observations you, this is one of the correlator modes. Then you you also can do observations of continuum with this mode, but I will tell you later. But okay, right? Or you can do also single uh, single continuum or a spectral line or a spectral scan. I'm sorry, but okay. Just because I want to define the band on in only to display in the field, in the field, uh, in the field setup. I just want to. 
include something here right so we said that we wanted to observe CO and dust in band 6 if I didn't say that before well I'm saying that now okay this is band 6 and then when, when we start including information to it but I only want I only need one of these so I will say 2 TST this is band 6 right and because I need to specify more things that I want right now it is showing that error but I just wanted it to know to, to tell me what was the the half power uh, being being with being with right at this so now I can see and I can start because it's an extended source right I can start then actually trying to see if I can do a better coverage with it and actually I can start adding individual pointings here yes. I can add up to 150 individual pointings okay and if I want to only do observations of these three regions or, or only the jet so I will just keep adding individual pointings here and let's say this is the the mosaic like observations that I want to do but I also can define a, a mosaic oh. all right so here you just define the length this the length of the sides of that rectangle that you want to use as a mosaic for your mosaic okay so this source is big I will do some big mosaic eight are second 80 times 90 oh look at that then I just I can I can climb it a little bit just because it looks cool and then here it says that you need 60 60 pointings in order to do that if you click here you can see the grid and in here it will tell you if you want to do the sampling with a different pattern right like that if you don't want to have too, too many too many pointings you can reduce here but then take into account that a mosaic that is not uniform in coverage is not uniform in noise so you should be careful with that I will always recommend go for Nyquist okay perfect but I'm going to do one individual point all right so that is I think everything with the field setup we have everything in place and we are ready to move on to to finish up the, the spectral setup right